Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're excited about the Vance. I'll tell you, I was talking to Sister Martin the other day, and she said that she was talking to Sister Wagers, and we're in for a Holy Ghost move. I'm ready for a Holy Ghost move, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Sister Rossner, would you take us before the Lord tonight? Yes, Lord, I just Jesus. Ask you to give Sister Wagers tonight as she brings the word. Father God, give us all ears to hear what your spirit would say to us tonight. Yes, Lord. And help us to bring it home and live it, Father God. Yes. And Lord, I just thank you that we can gather in your name tonight. And I just ask that you bless this service, bless each and every one that came out. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. And uh, I'd like to say, first of all, thank you to the home church. It takes a lot of work to go into one of these, and uh, we appreciate the home church opening up their church and allowing us to have the ladies of Vans here. So let's give the home church a, a clap offering tonight. Amen. <clears throat> we thank Sister Martin and her ladies for, for doing this and working so hard to make it a success, and we appreciate it very much. Uh, ladies, I'd like to, to remind you that it is time for Light Another Candle. You need to get your uh, Light Another Candle offerings in by November the 4th. And if you have them tonight, we surely will take them tonight. Amen. But uh, you need to get them in by November the 4th. And some of you might say, well, what is Light Another Candle? It is you uh, give in an offering. And that offering goes to the messenger, the Pentecostal Church of God Messenger College, or it goes to missions or wherever there is a need. So that's where your funds go to. And um, we ask that you get behind it because it is part of the program of the women's ministries of the Pentecostal Church of God. And also, I'd like to remind you and write this on your calendars. April the 25th is our Woman to Woman's Conference. And I'm excited this year. I've been excited every year, but I'm excited this year because we have got some phenomenal ladies that are going to speak. And Sister Angie Reynolds is one of them. Uh, they just took over Solid Rock uh, Church. And I was hoping she was going to be here tonight, but I've not seen her, so she might be coming in yet. Part of their church is back there. Amen. It's good to see you. I didn't realize you were here. Amen. But uh, she's going to be our speaker and one of the speakers. And um, I've not got, she's not gotten back with me on her topic. So uh, I will announce that later. Sister Linda Geralds is over here. Stand up, Sister Linda. She's going to be one of our speakers. And her topic is out of the box going to be good. Amen. And uh, she, I know she's excited. I'm excited to hear our sister Linda. And you know what? Sister Linda just got voted in as um, co-pastors at their church. So let's give her uh, a hand on that. Congratulations. <laughs> and our third speaker is going to be Sister Debbie McNerney. Um, some of you probably know Sister Debbie McNerney. She's no stranger to the organization. Um, Sister Debbie is Brother McNerney's daughter, and she has grown up in church all of her life. But uh, she's got a, an awesome testimony. Um, she's going to be sharing that with us on April the 25th. She got uh, Satan set a trap. And she fell into that trap, into a, a cult-like, and from another country. So it's going to be really, really good. And um, she is just now beginning to talk about it and uh, what God has done for her and what God had brought her out of. It is amazing what God has brought her out of. And don't forget, I know this is only the end of October, but January is coming. <laughs> Amen. So registration is the 1st of January. January the 1st through the 31st. 
Uh, it will be $5 per, per lady. So um, we ask that you get your registrations out there and get your ladies signed up to be a part of your women's ministry. And we say God bless you, and we thank you for that. And uh, we say uh, thank you to um, the host church again for opening up your church. And also the Woman to Woman's Conference, I forgot to mention, is April the 25th. And it's going to be at Middletown, Middletown, Ohio. And it's going to be at a sacred dwelling place. That was Brother Roy Shepherd's church. Uh, Brother Roy is uh, sickness. He has cancer. Uh, they only gave him like probably a year now, 10 months. So um, we have done a merge there. Thank God. God has been greatly... Um, blessed us with a new pastor his name is brother and sister Hayes and I tell you we met with him actually brother Roland has met with him before but I just met with him last week I think it was and I tell you she has the spirit of you'll love her you will love her she sat there she was telling me what they was going to do for the brother Shepherd. Brother Shepherd pastored that church, I think, six years, and they was going to have Pastor Appreciation Day for him. And she just started crying. Now, that's a pastor's heart. It's a pastor's heart. So um, it will be, uh, and you'll get to meet them, and we, it will be at their church, the sacred dwelling place in Middletown, Middletown, Ohio, and that is April the 25th. So mark those on your calendars, and I hope you're making plans to to be there. Amen. Now I am going to move out of the way and let God have his way. Amen. Are you ready for the Holy Spirit to move? Amen. Our sister is going to come. She's going to lead us in some worship. So you just enter right in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Everybody give me one of these. That's my hug to you tonight. Um, God is awesome in this place. How many of you have enjoyed the worship in that? We all want more of him, don't we? Yes. I love you and I love your organization. I'd like to join the PCG. <laughs> we love your organization. We love brother and sister Roland and we know the pastors here, um, and they've got a sweetheart dog, uh, Sadie. How many's ever met Sadie? <laughs> and they've got a new dog, Ellie. Got a new dog, Ellie. And uh, so many of your uh, of the other churches. I'll leave somebody out. We've been there, and um, we just love you. And how many of you believe God's real on a Friday night? Yeah. Yes. Amen. I want to share with you a message that the Lord has given me, and I've entitled this, Help, Lord, This is Too Much for Me. And um, I'm going to ask you to stand again for the reading of God's Word. If you would, I'd like for you to open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 18. And I want us to begin reading with verse 13. It's on page 123. Somebody say yes. yes. <laughs> Exodus 18 and verse 13. Let's begin there. It says, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. Somebody say, wow. wow. Say it again backwards. Wow. wow. <laughs> Verse 16. Moses said, when they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. How would you like to settle disputes for about two million folks? Now somebody say, wow. Wow. I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. 
And Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Everybody say, help, Lord. This is too much for me. This thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Let's pray. Father, I love you tonight. And what an honor and a privilege it is to be with these precious ladies. Oh, God. And I just thank you that never again throughout eternity are we going to be gathered just as we are this night. Never again. And Lord, you know the needs that are present. You know those who need healing. Physical healing, mental, emotional. You know, Lord Jesus, who's discouraged. You know those that are weary. You know those that are oppressed. You know those that need direction and answers. You know those that have never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Whatever the need is tonight, Lord, we are praising you in advance and believing that your purposes for this service tonight are going to be accomplished. Lord, anoint this cracked pot one more time. Love them through me. Pour out your spirit and let your will be accomplished in this altar tonight. For we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. It's all about you. Hide me in the shadow of the cross. And we'll give you the praise for we ask it in Jesus' name. And all the ladies said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. It's almost a quarter till eight. Is anybody nervous? Let's go. Help, Lord, this is too much for me. All right, sweetheart, let's go. I want us to begin this message by looking at one of our favorite childhood stories. Everybody say, yay for Goldilocks. Yay, Yay, the girl with the golden curls. Now listen, don't discount Goldilocks. Even NASA acknowledges her. Planet Earth is a Goldilocks planet. She is not too far from the sun. And she's not too close to the sun. To have liquid water on her surface. And therefore be able to support life. So. Earth's distance to the sun is just right. How many got it? Goldilocks planet, because she follows the Goldilocks principle. All right, now look at the essence. I want us to look at the essence of this tale. Once Goldilocks wandered into the forest and entered that little cottage of the three bears, she entered what I'm going to call a battle with the twos. Help, Lord, this is too much for me. Case in point, when she was hungry and saw the three bowls of porridge, she ran into a battle. I want you to help me. Papa's bowl was too hot and Mama's bowl was too cold. And likewise, when she desired to sit down and rest... She entered another battle with the twos. Help me again. Papa's chair was too hard and Mama's chair was too soft. And she wound up in baby bears that eventually winds up falling apart. But finally, when she went into the bedroom to lie down, deja vu, here's another battle with a two. Help me again. Papa's bed was too high and Mama's... Mama's bed was too low. Oh, the battle with the twos. 
I want to give you a definition of that adverb to. One dictionary said it like this. It means excessive to such a degree as to be regrettable. Now, in our scripture text in Exodus 18, we find that Moses, just like Goldilocks, had entered a battle with the twos. And as we listen in on that conversation between him and his father-in-law Jethro, we find out that Moses is trying to act as a judge and arbiter for at least two million Jews that came out of Egypt. And I want you to notice what his father-in-law said. He said, Moses, this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. How many of you know, can see that Moses was pastoring the original mega church? Come on, somebody say yes. And that's what a pastor does. Settle disputes. Somebody say, I know that's right. Somebody say, I know that's right. And teach his flock the word of God. But I want you to look up there on the screen and I want to ask you, does that statement resonate with you tonight? Is there something too heavy for you and it's reached such a degree that it has become regrettable? Are you about to wear away or perhaps the people you're trying to lead? When we search the pages of God's word, there are numerous examples of people battling the twos. I got down Strong's Concordance and I found this list. Here's a bunch of combos. I didn't, you know, this isn't even half of them. But in your Bible, you'll find this. Too mighty, too strong, too hard, too long. Too far, too great, too narrow, too straight. Too little, too much, too few, too high. And the last four sound like old age. Too old, too painful, too heavy, and too sore. (laughs) Are you here and you are battling the twos. Well, you know, the Lord gave me a message to tell you. And he said, Edna, I want you to tell him this. I am God over all the twos. And he said, is there anything too hard for me? <laughs> and I said, Lord... Our answer is, O Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. And you say, Edna, what is that saying? It's saying this, from Goldilocks to Moses. And you can throw NASA in for good measure. There is nothing Absolutely nothing, no nothing. Too hot, too cold, too heavy, too old, too hard, too soft, too high, too low, too painful for him to handle. Now I want to introduce you to one of the best books that I have read recently. You'll Get Through This by Max Lucado. Everybody say, God bless the Church of Christ. Tap the one on the right and say, Lucille, get that book. You'll get through this. And in that book, he tells about an inflatable clown, Bozo, that he had when he was about eight years old. And guess what? Give me a drum roll. We've got him here tonight. Somebody say yes. Yes. I love this.
this. My husband got him on Amazon, and it said for ages three and up. And I wanted to write and say, can a 65-year-old lady get one of these? (laughs) Now I'm 66. Somebody say yes. Hallelujah. But I love what Max said about his clown. He said, you know what? Bozo only knew how to do one thing. Bounce back. Now listen, he's called a bop bag because you bop him. Isn't that profound? And he said, you know what? You could take my bop bag. You could pop him in the nose. You could kick him in the side. You could clobber him. And he would fall down, but not for long. He said, Bozo only knew how to do one thing. Bounce back. How many of you know we're going somewhere with this? So all he knew how to do was bounce back. Now hang on. Max said, Bozo was not strong. He was full of air. You'll get it. Tap the one on the left and say, Lucille, I've told you and told you. It ain't all about you. (laughs) Come on. Look up here. We're not going to make it because we're strong. We're going to make it because he's strong. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, Bozo could not duck and he could not defend himself. But there was something in Bozo that kept him on his feet. And that something was called ballast. And listen, 40 plus years ago when Max Lucado would have been 8 years old, that ballast was 3 pounds of lead. Now how many of you know the EPA would not allow that today? Mine's got about five pounds of sand in the bottom. But it acts as a counterbalance to the punches that it receives. Everybody say ballast. Now you know why some folks remain beaten and bitter and broken out on out for the count on the mat. They don't have any ballast. Look up here. If you've been saved 15 minutes, you've received some punches. But I want to tell you something tonight. As children of the king we have a ballast there is something within us that keeps us on our feet and that something is someone and it is Jesus Listen to these ballast scriptures. Paul said, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, and yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's ballast. Listen, he said in Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's ballast. John said in 1 John 4, 4, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And this is my favorite. Paul said in Ephesians 4 and 6, One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now, I want to tell you something. There's not a one of us here tonight in this auditorium. But what we could have been somewhere having a nervous breakdown. But we're not. We're back on our feet because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's not a one in this auditorium tonight uh, that we couldn't be disillusioned by failure in leadership. But we're still here tonight. Because uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let me tell you something. Some of you should be in an insane asylum, but you're not. Uh, You're here because uh, one God and Father of all, who is above all and over all and in you all. Let me tell you something. Glory be unto God. Some of us could be uh, completely out of church tonight. Can I hear an amen? Amen. But we're here. 
we're in our right mind. You know why? Because there's something in us. And that something is someone. And that someone is Jesus. <laughs> Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. So I took my little list out of the Strong's Concordance. And you know what? We're giving the devil a notice. Satan, there is nothing too mighty and there's nothing too strong. There's nothing too hard and there's nothing too long. There's nothing too far and there's nothing too great. There's nothing too narrow and there's nothing too straight. There's nothing too little and there's nothing too much. There's nothing too few and there's nothing too high. There's nothing too old and there's nothing too painful. There's nothing too heavy and there's nothing too sore. Come on. We can make it. Not because of who we are, but because of who he is. Come on, somebody say yes. Oh, glory be unto God. Listen, with the Apostle Paul, we proclaim we are persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Or J.B. Phillips says it like this, we may be knocked down, but we are never knocked out. (laughs) Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I want us to look at three twos specifically tonight. And to begin with, we're going to combine the first couple of them. First of all, there is a journey too great. And I'm talking about for us alone. Come on, somebody say yes. And coupled with that, there is an enemy too strong for us alone. All right. Let's go to 1 Kings 18. And we're going to find a story in the life of Elijah that embodies these two twos. First of all, in 1 Kings 18, we need to recall how the fire fell on Elijah's sacrifice. Come on, somebody say yes. Every time I look at that picture, I want to say, yeah. Not an awesome picture. I want to tell you something. It's not enough to preach against sin. When you get finished, you got to produce the fire. Come on, call the fire down. Somebody say yes. And then after the fire fell, Elijah put 450 prophets of Baal to death. Come on, somebody say yes. And then because of those two events, the fire falling and the putting the prophets to death, we find out that Jezebel rises up. Those were her prophets. And she becomes the enemy too strong for Elijah alone to handle. Here's Edna's standard version, ESV. By this time tomorrow, you're dead meat. (laughs) And those of you who know the story, that's pretty good paraphrase, is it not? And listen, because of Jezebel's threats, we find Elijah fleeing for his life. And he winds up in the Negev desert, one day's journey south of Beersheba. In that day and time, that would have been about 15 miles below Beersheba. And now he's facing a journey to great. All right, let's look at it. We find him here, and he's lying under a juniper tree. He's exhausted, he's discouraged, and he's praying to die as he falls asleep. Now, somebody needs this. Listen to me. You got to understand that we're always the most vulnerable after a great victory. Come on. This is the man who just prayed the fire down on Mount Carmel. Who slew 450 prophets. And now he's crying, it is enough. Maybe somebody's in the church house tonight. And just recently you have said, 
I've had enough. And I don't know if all of you can understand this or not, but the devil can make you think that it would be easier to die than to go on living. Come on. I can't look at that without remembering Popeye. He said, I've stood all I can stands, and I can't stands no more. It is enough. Oh, Lord, just kill me, Lord. That's what he's saying. Take away my life. But I want to tell you something. I don't know who is here tonight, and you're exhausted and you're weary. And perhaps you thought it might be easier to die than to go on living. But I want, I want you to see this. At some point, Elijah is awakened by the touch of a divinely sent messenger. It's an angel with freshly baked bread and a cruise of water. Somebody say, great day in the morning. And the angel... Set, you know, woke him up. And he said, arise and eat. The journey is too great for you. And so Elijah eats some of the freshly baked bread and he drinks the water and he goes to sleep again. And you know what? I, I don't know how long the angel allowed him to sleep, but he shook him, touched him again. And said, arise and eat. The journey is too great for you. The second time. And you know what? The journey was too great. He was facing a 200 mile trip to Mount Sinai. Or Mount Horeb. How many of you know it's going to take a lot of bread and water to get you 200 miles? Somebody say yes. But you know what? The Lord spoke to my heart. You know, sometimes you can read familiar stories in the Bible. How many of you know we read right over some things? But only God can write a book that you can look into a story that you've known all your life and read and then see something that you've never seen before. And this was what the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, Edna, I want you to tell my people two touches from heaven changes everything. Two touches. And I believe that one touch was for the enemy too strong. Oh, Miss Jezzy. And I believe the second one was for the journey too long. Two touches. And I want to tell you something. I believe there's some ladies that's going to leave this place tonight singing, He touched me. Oh, He touched me. And oh, the joy that flooded my soul. Something wonderful happened. And now I know He touched me. And He made me whole. How many of you believe He's got two for the twos? How many got it? Now listen, there's a great tenderness here in this story that can be easily overlooked. I want you to understand this, that these touches by the angel here were tailor-made for an exhausted, weary, and frightened man. I believe they were gentle touches. They were so unlike the touch that Jacob received by the angel at Peniel. Look at that, this next picture. That touch caused Jacob to limp for the rest of his life. Come on, somebody say yes. Now I want to tell you something. The hands coming out of the white robe. That's an Old Testament visitation of Christ. Because Jacob said here in Genesis 32 and verse 30, Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, face of God. For I have seen God face to face. Do we not believe tonight that Jesus is God, 
God the Son, come on. But you know what? Listen, sometimes we need a tackle. Tap the one right and say, Lucille, sometimes God needs to tackle you. <laughs> and sometimes all we need is just a tap. Now, look, don't get so sanctified on me. We've all needed to be tackled. Come on. How many of you know there's a lot of flesh in all of us? Somebody say, I know that's right. How many's working on killing it? Sometimes we all need to be tackled. But I want to tell you something. I believe for a weary, exhausted warrior, this angel gave Elijah simply a a tap. Somebody say yes, a touch instead of a a tackle. Mm. Everybody say two touches will change everything. I want to tell you the story about a man named Thomas. Thomas was born in 1899, the son of a Baptist pastor. Everybody say, God bless the Baptists. We've got the Church of Christ and the Baptists, and here we are in the PCG. It's awesome, isn't it? His mother was the church pianist. By age 12, he was imitating the jazz music you'd hear in the Deep South. He was so gifted on the piano. His talent began to open doors for him. And in his late teens, he was already playing in bars or speakeasies, as they called them in that day and time, in Chicago. Hey, at 12, he's a prodigy on the piano. He can play anything you hear in the Deep South at 12 years old. At age 21, a relative persuaded Thomas to return to the God of his youth. And he wound up being the music director at Pilgrim Baptist Church in Chicago. By the age of 26, Thomas is married. He began a publishing company and he founded the National Convention of Choirs. And even in the heart of the Depression... Come on, the stock market crashed in 29. But even in the heart of the depression, life is good for Thomas. He's working with some of the greatest singers in the history of gospel music, including Mahalia Jackson. My husband has probably every album that Mahalia ever recorded. His ministry is growing. The first child, their first child is on the way. And then it happened. Thomas came to a conclusion. My enemy is too strong. And this journey is way too long. Let me tell you what happened. He was out in St. Louis singing to a church audience and at the end of that service he was handed a Western Union telegram and how many of you know we just lost everybody under 30 (laughs) they know about Skype they've never heard tell of Western Union four words your wife just died She died in childbirth. Thomas left Chicago and he hurried back. He left St. Louis and he hurried back to Chicago. And his newborn son died the following day. Thomas grew angry and he secluded himself from people. I want to give you a quote so I get it just right. He said, I just wanted to go back to the jazz world that I knew so well. I felt God had done me an injustice. I didn't want to serve him anymore. And I didn't want to write gospel songs. 
Help, Lord. This is too much for me. You know, when we hear Thomas' story, it's easy to be critical. But Ron and I just celebrated 42 years of marriage in September. I can't imagine my life without him. And let me tell you something with all the compassion I must I can muster until you've lost your companion you don't know how Thomas was feeling to lose his wife and only child a newborn son And I dare say that there's not somebody in here, I think all of us sometimes have wondered if heaven has dealt us an injustice. Come on, we've all struggled. I want to tell you something, life is not fair, but God is. Can I hear an amen? I felt like God had done me an injustice. I didn't want to serve him anymore or write gospel songs. But just when it seemed as though hell's forces had triumphed, a friend took Thomas to a neighborhood music school. And that night as the sun was setting, Thomas sat down at one of the pianos. That's important. I don't know if anybody else was in the school that night or not. But Thomas began to sing. He began to play. And he began to pray. And guess what? The same thing that happened under the juniper tree happened on the piano bench. God touched Thomas. And this song was birthed. For the first time, he began to sing. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired. Come on, he's lost his wife and baby. I am weak, I am worn Through the storm, through the night Lead me my hand precious Lord lead me home yes Thomas A. Dorsey would testify years later that it was on that piano bench that God healed him. And you know what the Lord spoke to my heart? He said, Edna, I want you to tell those ladies, it's real important that you get back on your bench, whatever that bench is, your source of gifting. Because when you get back on that bench, there's not enough demons in hell that can keep God from touching you. And I want to tell you something. I don't know. Who is here in this church tonight? uh, And you may have put down an instrument. You may have put down the word of God. uh, And God is saying you pick up that instrument. uh, You pick up that Bible and you preach again. If you're good working with the young people, you get back on that bench. uh, If you're good with a jail ministry, with the old folks, whatever it is, you get back on your bench. Because I want to tell you something. God didn't have just one touch for 
Lord Thomas Dorsey, he had two touches. One for the enemy too strong. You know why I know he defeated Thomas's enemy? Because Thomas came out of seclusion and he got back to the Pilgrim Baptist Church. Let me tell you something tonight. God didn't call any Lone Rangers. You need to get connected to a family of God. You need a pastor to feed you. You need a church to nourish you. You need to get back on your bench. Whatever your bench is, God will touch you when you're on the bench. And you know what? Not only did he come out of conclusion and the enemy too strong was defeated, but I believe that God gave him a second touch, one for the journey too long. Let me tell you something. Thomas Dorsey said, I don't want to ever write another gospel song. But after God touched him on the bench, he went on to write 3,000 plus gospel songs. And among them was Peace in the Valley, the most recorded gospel gospel song in history you say Edna what are you talking about I'm saying you haven't sung your best song yet you haven't preached your best sermon yet you haven't prophesied your greatest yet get back on that bench and allow God to touch you for the enemy too strong and touch you again for the journey too long Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking you some questions tonight. Number one, do you feel that heaven has dealt you an injustice? I tell you in 1977, when my pastors and two sons were killed in a plane crash, I struggled big time. Big time. But how many believe that God is still good? And God's still in control. Come on. Have you isolated and secluded yourself? Get connected. Come on. Tap the one on the left and say, Lucille, we've got to get connected. (laughs) Somebody said, well, I don't know about that church. Hey. Hey. Listen, you're not going to find a perfect church. And if you did, you'd mess it up when you got in it. I'd mess it up. We all need a church. (laughs) Have you isolated and secluded yourself? I'll tell you, the devil can play heyday with your mind if you don't have somebody to come alongside of you to help you see around corners and help you see the big picture. Come on. Have you lost your song? Have you received a message that has rocked your world? Most of you know my testimony But in the year 2000, I received a message that rocked my world. Cancer getting ready to start the third stage spread to the lymph nodes. But let me tell you something. We're coming to Bozo again. Glory to God, we're still here tonight. Some of us have been to hell and back again. Who hasn't been abused? Who hasn't been misunderstood? Who hasn't had someone twist your words? We've all uh, been through some things, but we're here. We're here. It's not because of who we are. It's because of who he is. And listen, we're going to make it. Glory to God. There's nothing too mighty. There's nothing too strong. There's nothing too hard. And there's nothing too long There's nothing too far And there's nothing too great There's nothing too narrow And there's nothing too straight There's nothing too little There's nothing too much There's nothing too few And there's nothing too high There's nothing too old And there's nothing too painful There's nothing too heavy And there's nothing too sore Give the Lord a clap offering of praise How many still feels like traveling on? 
Glory be unto God. How many's ever had somebody twist what you said? But we're still here. Come on. How many's been abused and misused? Come on. How many's have you, you could say, Edna, somebody took advantage of me? They never did pay back what they said they were going to pay back. Welcome to reality. But we can still make it because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Everybody say there's an enemy too strong. There's a journey too long. Now that's for us alone. Somebody say yes. I love what King David said. Right along with King David of old, Thomas Dorsey could sing, He delivered me from my strong enemy, for they were too strong for me. But they're not too strong for the one who's in us. Hallelujah. And then thirdly, there is a burden too heavy. And again, we're talking about for us alone. All right. Here's a marvelous scripture that fits in beautifully here. I want you to look at this. Proverbs 16 and 3. Commit, and the Hebrew word is galal. It means to roll off on two. Commit your works, whatever it is that you do. Roll it on to the Lord. And your thoughts, your plans will be established. Now, the word picture for Proverbs 16.3 is of a camel that's burdened with a heavy load. And when it's time for that camel to be uh, the load taken off of the camel, two things have to happen. Number one, the camel must kneel down. Somebody say, I know that's right. Look up here. No camel ever gets rid of a load standing up and we may not be physically able to get down on our knees but how many of you know that speaks of humility (laughs) commit to roll off on two that camel has to kneel down and then I love this next one this is an awesome picture after he kneels down secondly the camel leans far to one side everybody give me one of these He leans far to one side and the load just rolls off. I want you to say, lean and let her roll. Come on, give me one of these. Lean and let her roll. And you bounce back. Give me one of these. Get your little paws up there. Come on, give me one of these. Yeah, you got it. I can just see it now. Somebody saying, what did that woman talk? about well she talked about (laughs) hallelujah this is awesome this next I want you to look at this from galal that word to roll off you know commit to roll off on to galal comes our word Golgotha or Golgotha and I thought well how awesome is it that at Golgotha, meaning to roll off on two, is exactly where we do roll off heavy loads onto the cross. Come on, say it with me again. Lean and let her roll. Come on, let's bounce back. Isn't this awesome? We got it. How many's getting something out of this tonight? Amen. Tap the one on the right and say, Lucille, you've got to get back on your bench. <laughs> say, that's your problem, Lucille, right there. You're not on the bench. I want to close... By telling you the story that the late, great E.V. Hill 
told concerning his beloved Mama Langdon. Now look up there. You're looking at one of the best preachers that ever walked on the planet. Everybody say, God bless the Baptist. Now what's the tally? Two Baptists and one Church of Christ? He tells a story in his book, A Savior Worth Having. How many of you believe Jesus is a Savior worth having? Concerning when he was just a kid, a boy. Mama Langdon was the woman who raised him. He said, and I'm, I'm going to quote it to get it just right. I don't know how old he was, but he said as a, as a child, he said, one time I had a fever of 105 degrees. And in my community, at this time it was Texas, no white doctor would see a Negro. The Negro doctor couldn't be found, and even if he were found, we wouldn't have the money to pay him. 105 degrees. But he said, my mama, the lady who raised him, she and her husband, just put her hand on my forehead. And said, Lord, you know. That's all she said. And he said, the next morning, I had to milk three cows and make four fires in my school before 8 o'clock. And that fever was gone. And all Mama said, Lord, you know. He said one time when it snowed and everything froze, we ran out of food. And I heard Mama praying. It was about midnight. Because that's when she prayed. And I heard her pray. Lord. You know. I have this boy. He's big. And he eats. And he's hungry. And we don't have no food. And I can't get out. But Lord, you know all about it. <laughs> and E.V. Hill said, the next morning, 7 o'clock a.m., Bud Anthony rode by on his horse and pitched a whole sack of food. On our porch. Let me tell you something, ladies. Bud Anthony still rides. Today he probably just comes in an SUV. But he still rides. I want to show you this, how we're going to get rid of our loads. And then we're going to pray.
know that the Lord will make a way for us. Where there seems to be no way, that's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to think that there's no way. But with God, there's all things are possible. Amen. Let's give the Lord another clap offering tonight. Amen. Now, as you leave tonight, did you want to say something? Oh. As you leave tonight, the home church has a bag. So when you go out this door, you grab a bag and you can take it to your motel with you or take it home with you, whatever you want to do. But they have provided a lunch bag and we are happy to have you. And hopefully you'll come back in the morning at 10 o'clock. Amen. How many has joined, enjoyed Sister Wagers tonight? Amen. How many has joined Bozo? <laughs> There you go. Amen. But Bishop Roland, would you dismiss us tonight? Mighty Father, we thank you for this glorious ladies' meeting. And Father, your spirit, Father, that has moved mightily among us. Yes, Jesus. Father, in the word that you've given here this thank night. You. Yes. Now, Father, continue your mighty workings within us. In Jesus' marvelous name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just for a few minutes, Sister Hottie, would you come and greet these people? Uh, this is our new district secretary uh, treasurer for women's ministry, Heidi Wells. So I want to have her to greet you tonight. Well, it's great to be here. Um, I just, I love ladies' advances. It's my favorite thing in the world to do um, every year. So I'm glad you all came out. We have a great turnout, and um, tomorrow will be great also, I'm sure. God bless. <laughs>